Hello everyone, this is the fourth lecture today, the fourth lecture of the mini course we are having with Jonathan. And today I'm going to introduce cyclic fiber spaces and give some example of give some examples of small cyclic fiber spaces and talk about their like Hegart genus and how to see some like how to see those small ones as a surgery on like certain knots. So what is a cyclic fiber space? It is a tree, it's a compact tree manifold that can be written as a disjoint union of circles, which we call fibers, such that each fiber has a neighborhood that is isomorphic to a fiber solid torus. Okay, then what is fiber solid torus? It is a mapping torus of a rotation map of a disk, which is basically we take disk cross i and we quotient by the following identification map where h is is rotation um, through 2 pi q over p angle where we want p to be larger than 1 and p and q to be relatively prime. So we like we basically take this q cross i and rotate and then join the edges, like very similar to the dentist kind of construction. And okay, and how does this space look like? Let's draw. Let's maybe demonstrate an example where Q is um, one and P is four. Um, as you can easily see, if if we are not taking the center point on the disk, H will take um, any point X. If um, any point X will have orbits, P mini orbits. But let's say this one is hx and this is h square and vice versa. X. They're not really straight lines, but assume that they're just these p points uh, cross i. So from the identification, this point is identified to this point and all the endpoints of this p intervals are going to be identified in this in this manner so that this these intervals will um will be glued to each other to form a single fiber where um in fact if um but as you can see the one in the center which is basically like the zero cross i this, whatever the rotation coefficient is, this, um, this interval does not change. In fact, um, we can see that if P is larger than one, all the other fibers except from the central one is going to be formed by multiple uh, arcs. That's, um, let me, oh, actually, hold on a second, okay, before we, on to that. Um, then the fibers of this space are the central fiber under identification and the union of these arcs. And when P is larger than one, uh, each fiber consists, uh, is formed by multiple um, intervals, except from the central one. So we will call the central one exceptional fiber to distinguish it from the others.
and the others will be called ordinary. So to sum up, uh, a cipher fiber space is a manifold, which is a disjoint union of circles such that each, each circle has a solid torus, uh, has a fiber solid torus neighborhood, which can be described by this for a given uh, QP. Okay. So if we map every circle into a point, we will obtain, um, we will obtain a, a compact surface and we will call this surface F. If we look at the fiber, if we just look at the fiber solid example, to demonstrate one example, we see that, um, let's say this is the base circle, uh, it's like the, the one at the zeroth level, but the rotation will, is going to cut D prime into P equal slices, right, where, let's say these points are all identified into one. So under pi, this is basically this, but we have the edges identified to each other too. Then at the end, we obtain a disk again. And you can see that the restriction of this quotient map pi onto the D prime is a P fault is a p-fold cyclic um, branch cover. Okay. Well, from this picture, if we have exceptional fibers, it's clearly sort of like interior. Then if M has non-empty boundary, we can say that uh, the boundary components do not contain exceptional fibers. So the boundary components should be all uh, torus. Each boundary component should be a torus. And um, from this definition, it's probably also obvious that any like surface, any S1 bundle over a surface is also a cipher fiber space with no exceptional fibers. So let's assume um, from now on, M is a cipher fiber space which has a base surface F and has an exceptional fiber and boundary components. So let's. Sure. Yeah. Sharon, could you go back up just a tiny bit about the boundary being empty? Not being empty. It does not contain exceptional. Okay. Sorry, I just hadn't copied that down yet. That's fine. Well, I mean, like, is it clear from this picture? Yes. Okay. So let's say um, the eyes will be the images of um, an eye. Okay, let's actually let Ni denote a fiber solid torus neighborhood of an in, like ordinary fiber and let denote Ni a fiber solid torus neighborhood of an, of an exceptional fiber. And then we get their projection or sort of like their image under the quotient map and let's call them the I um, on F. So, we see that if we remove these neighborhoods from M, let's take them out, and similarly, let's remove these disks from F. Um, we see that now the restriction map onto M0 the restriction of pi onto M0 is a S1 bundle projection. So we can also uh, recover any cipher fiber surface from taking the surface F F0 and taking an S1 bundle of it and, and then taking 
and plasma solid tori and sewing them back. So M0 is homeomorphic to um, F0 cross I cross S1, sorry, if um, F0 is orientable. And it is twisted S1 bundle if F0 is not orientable, is non orientable. This distinction of the base surface or base surfaces to be oriented or like non orientable will be will show up again. So I'm just going to use this O and N to um, describe this, these different situation. Okay. So now let's think about the pi one. Pi one of the. Um, Sorry, what is the meaning of uh, the twisted uh, product? It's like you can consider it as um, Möbius band, like Möbius. It's not a product, sorry. It's the like the twisted S1 bundle over the surface. Like you can consider, like Möbius band is a twisted S1 bundle over um, over interval, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's that kind of like. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So let's just quickly look at the um, pi one of a cipher fiber surface. So from each re removal of n i, we are going to get circles. Um, we are going to remove disks from f that will correspond to a new generators, and each boundary since each boundary is also torus, they will also intersect F in disks, and they will also correspond to some curve where we will denote them by DIs. And let's say H is the S1 bundle um, component in M0. So and in the oriented case, we see that since M0 is homomorphic to, um, the cross uh, the the direct product we basically obtain this right it's basically going to be this and in terms of these generators we can simply say less a1 and b1 to a g and b g will be the generators coming from this f being a um genus g surface and we have cns um, and we have the ones, the i's, and the h, where h commutes with each ai, bi, ci, and dm in this case. And we see that c0 is, this is basically, that's basically coming from the pi one of f0. Oops, this is G. But when the base surface is non orientable, so M0 will have a slightly different presentation. Let's AIs denote the uh, generators that corresponds to the cross cap of this non orientable surface. H. But right now, um, every like all the S1 bundle over this like this uh, Möbius band components will um, will give us a Klein bottle. Then we have the following um, relation as opposed to these commuting for each. AI, but H still commutes with 
CI and DI because they form a torus in M1. And if you look at the surface, this punctured surface, we see that CI is now going to be um, AI square and CI's This is one half. Okay, any questions so far? Um, did, you say, did you say that H does or does not commute with AI? In the second case, it does not commute with AI. Wait, sorry, it does not commute. I, I just forget the inverse then. Now it doesn't commute because those two curves, when you take the S1 bundle over this, because this each um, AI will correspond to um, sort of like the Möbius band, part of this non-orientable surface, right? Let's say this curve is the generator of AI. And when you take the S1 bundle of it, you will get a climb bottle, not torus. So the relation you will get with AI is going to be in this one. Okay. Well, in both cases though, we still have the boundary um, to be just disjoint union of tori. And as we explain again, now we can actually express a cyclofibrous uh, space as like we take a puncture surface and we take an S1 bundle over it and basically we take some solid torus and then glue them back in, which, which is basically um, what we are describing is basically a surgery, but we want to know the surgery coefficients, right? So let's say, um, well, we are basically going to glue back Ni back, let's say then uh, Mi, mu i and lambda i uh, denote a meridian, meridian and longitude pair for the boundary of Ni. And since H now will be the curves that are on the boundary, they're basically going to the image of the boundary under this rotation map, right? So we can see that H is going to be QI times mu I plus PI times lambda I. Well, I'm assuming that each cent like exceptional fiber has the PI QI fiber neighborhood. Then, um, and all, okay. And also, okay, CI will be um, SI times mu I plus RI lambda I, which okay, we have done this a lot this week. QI RI minus PI SI is negative one. Then you can see that mu I is going to map to. Um, PI CI minus RI H. Maybe I should just repeat again, this boundaries in M0 now have, um, um, we can consider them having a basis as like in terms of CI and HR and we recover M back by suing the exceptional uh, fiber solid torus neighborhoods back. And here, I'm just assuming that let's say lambda i and mu, uh, mu i and lambda i be the longitude pair for the suit solid torus. Mm -hmm. And then the h now will be the, what the, uh, the, the curves on the boundary will look like. And you can see that under 2 pi q over p rotation, it's going to be look like this. And then the rest is basically what we have been doing this week. So we see that the surgery coefficient now will be um, PI minus 
minus uh, pi over negative r, I just want to note here that um, n0, when i is 0, we remove the uh, ordinary fiber. So we know that p1 is, p0 is 1. And let's say um, in that case, r0, let denote um, R0 to be B, it's just the convention people um, usually follow in the books. So we can also, we can express now M to be, we can choose to like express them by using this notation now where F is the base surface and we specify the, um, surgery coefficients for each um, exceptional fiber. Well, so from this relation, we know that now the surgery coefficient is pi over negative ri. And then by Van Kempen, we can uh, recover the fundamental group of M from like the fundamental group of F0 simply by cautioning out with these new relations. And I have just a couple of remarks regarding the fundamental group of a cyberfiber surface. As you see, the subgroup generated by H uh, is central in the oriented case, and it's normal in non-orientable case. And um, in pi 1m, if we kill H and all of the CIs, then we recover the fundamental group of the base surface, so we conclude that the induced map of pi onto the fundamental groups is onto, which is a very useful um, observation in terms of deciding which surfaces cannot be the base surface of a given um, three manifold, assuming that it's, it has a cyberfiber structure. So let's look at some of the easy examples where um, S2 is um, just, where the base surface is just S2. Well, it turns out that if we have only one exceptional fiber, not S3, PQ, so we simply get land space QP, right? because we remove a disk and we take the surface bundle, which will be at solid torus, and then we glue back uh, another solid torus with this surgery description, which is by definition is a land space. But, um, but it turns out that if you have two singular fibers, the resulting space is also a land space. So a lens phase. To see that, okay, we we take two, we remove two disks from S2, and we take the product name, like the, we take the product of it with S1, and which will correspond to a tor solid torus where we remove a tube. from the solid torus, right? So two solid torus will be glue, um, sorry, we will glue two torus, so, solid torus back. So one of them is the interior, the one in outside and the other one is, let's say the one inside, but you can co like convince yourself that it, what is left here. So if I take a solid torus and remove a tube, this is like thickened we call it a thickened torus, which is basically um, T2 cross I. 
And if I take another solid torus, right, and glue this back in here, where this map will go to some PQ curve on this solid on the solid torus, but we can basically cover any torus by any given like PQ curve. And similarly, we can do the same thing to the outside boundary. So, and we know that now each curve on the torus bonds a disk and you can basically extend that structure. It's just the meridian will change, but you still get them, we, we still, we will still get them solid torus. So once you confirm, like, once you convince yourself that if you glue a solid torus back into a thickened solid torus, you still get the solid torus, then the result is obvious because this, this operation will correspond to doing the first filling. And then when you do the second filling, it's still, again, the same as like gluing two solid tori back. But, okay, things get messy when N is three. So this is not as... Obvious, it's a bit tricky. Well, we have computed the pi one of m in general case, and then when we if we assume m is a cyberfiber surface with base surface sphere and with three exceptional fiber, we have the following pi one presentation of the fundamental group. So, the first thing that I will do is to prove that sort of outline to prove that um, pi one of m is non-abelian. Well, if we kill h, we get the quotient space, uh, quotient group to be um, C1, C2, C3, and we have CI trivial, C to the PI is trivial, and the uh, sum of all three is also trivial. But if you are like, maybe you know, this is actually what is called uh, the triangular, the triangle group. And you can basically use uh, ideas that are that are like coming from geometry and hyperbolic geometry to show that this group um, is not abelian unless all these coefficients are two. And again, the proof relies on you take the geodesic uh, triangle with the angles like pi over pi i, and it's you you use the ideas that come from the geometry. It's it's not very hard to see. And in case of three, uh, so in case where all these numbers are two, we see that we can actually maybe uh, we can actually see that now. Um, Okay, I'm not going to say how, but there is a quotient map that takes pi one of m to the quaternions. Which is also non-abelian, as you know. And this completes the proof that um, for m, um, for m is, is a cyber fiber surface, well, sort of not completes the proof, but like the completes the outline of the proof with three exceptional fiber, then the pi one is not abelian. Okay, this is good because then we know that, um, then we know that since pi one of M is not abelian, we know that M is not a land space. And we know that the Higart genus 
So the Hegar genus um, of M is at least two. Well, in this special case, we can actually show that M um, admits a Hegar splitting of genus two. And to see that, we are just going to draw some pictures. Let's see, okay. M was, it's true with three exceptional fibers. So we roughly, we have a picture like this. So this time we drill two tubes. Okay. So let's say the first solid torus, which is like the regular neighborhood, let's say like a neighborhood of the um, fiber, uh, the fiber solid torus neighborhood of the first exceptional fiber is the one outside. And let's say this one is the second one and this is the third one. Well, in this space, we know that these three toruses are filled with, um, filled with solid torus. So if I basically just take any two of them, let's take first one and the second one and tube it. So I think one can say that the outside solid torus tubed with the second solid torus is actually a handle body. But we need to know what is going on, um, like what is left. So what is left is basically we have the to uh, sol uh, solid torus, which is filled with another solid torus. And we also remove this tube and uh, this other solid torus. So this is, this is the space, like we want to know what it is and if we are lucky that it's a handle body. Okay, to see that, um, let's first assume that this, this tube there, the tube and the, the second solid torus there is like trivially. So filling the third solid torus, as we discussed previously, is already a solid torus. So we're basically, so what is left is basically a solid torus, to, but we remove a tube and another solid torus from it. And if you remember from the definition of the handle bodies, it's a gluing a handle. You can convince yourself that like the gluing a handle is basically the same as drilling out a handle. Right? Like we glue this, but we can just remove the same thing from the three ball. We still have this sort of uh, non non trivial curve here. And similarly, if you can remove um, you can also convince yourself that adding a one handle with this point of picture is basically the same as adding a tube and adding a solid torus. So once you convince yourself that these two pictures are similar, it is the same in, in the homeomorphism class of the, uh, the space, then this result is obvious because we basically take a solid torus and we add or we drill a piece like this. So the blue part is also a, a two handle body, which um, completes the proof. So we show that M has uh, the Hegar genus of M is two. In fact, actually the same construction, um, works for every cipher fiber spaces with with a sphere base and if you have any exceptional fibers with this construction we can get a Hegar splitting of m um, 
of genus M minus one. Then we know that the Hagar genus is going to be then at least M minus one, at most M minus one. Okay, so what is the surgery description for this particular example? Also, any questions so far? Okay. So from what we have like covered this week, it's actually pretty like straightforward to see the surgery description of a cyclofiber space with sphere, um, with with base surface sphere. Well, I yesterday Jonathan told us that lens spaces are surgeries on unknot. So basically, a zero surgery on an unknot is. Is to cross S1. Right. And to obtain this space, we are going to drill out um, solid torus, which we can now represent them. And then we are going to glue those solid torus back, solid tori back with this given surgery instruction. So surgery diagram be something like this. For M, I say this is M. So this is where this guy is has the coefficient zero. Basically, you can see the um, like the discs here, and in fact the the iteration technique for for the lens space surgery descriptions um, to like describe them in terms of integral surgery can be done here in the similar way that um, you can basically take this any coefficient and then do um, what we did yesterday. They're hard to draw, that's why people sometimes use, um, well, people use them, these graphs. Where, let's say, this has the continued fraction. Um, given by these M1 mini integers, so. can basically denote um, surgery in terms of these um, graphs. Something goes here. Minor detail, but just about notation, when you want to express it, um, <clears throat> a continued fraction expansion the way we've been doing. Usually you put a, a superscript minus at the end of the brackets. Yeah. So, is that correct? Oh, I, I don't know. Okay. Good. Thank you. And, 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 and. Okay, this is just like minor detail, but since drawing them are hard, this is basically this graph will give you an information of how many times they're like linked to each other. And you can basically um, transfer this information to in this like simple looking graphs. Okay, the last thing that the remaining time I want to discuss, well, I think when the base surface is not S2, it's not as like immediate to see the surgery description in terms of like this kind of like like in terms of un unmetered components. Um, so maybe I have a question just like to clarify the construction, like how does, how does this description like relate to the definition from before? The disjointing of circles definition? Yeah, like how, how, do, how do you see that this is like equivalent to that? Well, we basically, okay, we said the space is like a disjoint union of circles and each circle has like a specific kind of 
neighborhood, right? Like some of them are just, some of them are just nice, but some of them are, um, is like the fiber in the way we describe where the central fiber just wraps around the solid torus once while the other fibers are like wrapping around the solid torus like multiple times. So this, this construction is based like starting from that definition, you can basically say that, okay, if I take out all the, um, like the neighborhoods of the regular, uh, sorry, exceptional fiber. So what you, what you are left is basically like an S1 bundle. So you can basically build a whole, whole space by starting from some like S1 bundle over a puncture surface and then sewing back the solid torus that you removed at the beginning. Okay, and here we're using the fact that like an S1 bundle over a punctured sphere is just trivial? Yes. Okay. Well, is actually like their home, like any S1 bundle over a um, orientable manifold is homeomorphic to just a product. So let's finish the uh, lecture with, the, uh, with defining the torus knot, which is a knot that can be drawn onto in the torus that wraps, um, that basically loops around the, uh, the torus in the meridial di direction P times and in the longitudinal direction Q times. Let's just demonstrate the simple example. P is a three and Q will be one. Yes, okay. So this is when um, P is three and Q is one. So this is basically T three one, which turned out to be the trefoil knot. Trefoil. And That's Just, not that's not quite true, is it? Yeah. I'm it looks, uh, my, that looks, that looks like an unknot to me. No, it's not. Yeah, it's it's, oh, it's, I think it's an unknot. It's it's unknot, sorry. Okay. T P one is unknot, right? Yeah, it's Q is one, sorry. Okay, that's true. It could have been two. So okay, this is unknot. This Okay, I'm not going to draw two, we don't have time. But what I want to note that uh, we can actually see a cipher fiber structure on, um, on S3 by using torus knot where we want to make sure that PQ are not like 0, 1 or uh, 1, 0 or there equals or minus. So basically if you just like, sorry, if you remember, we can obtain S3 uh, by gluing two torus where the meridian and longitude pairs are like sort of switched. So if we take any PQ torus where the PQ pair is not one of these pairs, then the, in the other torus, this PQ curve will be a QP curve. And you can also see that um, it is going to give a, like a cyber fiber um, structure onto the S3 because the central fibers are still like just the central curves are still sort of here right okay. and the one here and the theorem that we want to like sort of discuss in the um, like exercise session is due to Moser. Actually, in seventies, Moser. Okay, I don't remember the date, but Moser actually classified all the surgeries on the torus knot, and it turns out that it it only it usually it like depends on this number, and 
when D is larger than one, you get a cipher fiber space, and when D is one, you get a land space, and when D is zero, you get this connected sum. And I will stop here because the details of the proof is long, and I want to sort of I want us to go through it during the go through some parts of it during the exercise session.